Welcome back. Today we'll discuss whether or not the Apostle Peter was a martyr for his faith. And if he was, what significance this holds for the evidence of Jesus' resurrection. The Apostle Peter holds a very important role in the humble beginnings of Christianity. The first account of Peter in the Gospels shows us that Peter started off as a fisherman. He then was later brought into Jesus' ministry. After the crucifixion and death of Jesus, Peter was among the first to see the resurrected Christ. As Paul records in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day and according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, Peter, and then to the twelve. Peter especially was very vocal about the resurrection of Jesus. In fact, as Peter is speaking to a large crowd, he says this in Acts chapter 2. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death. Now based on this, the importance of Peter's potential martyrdom can give strong evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. Because Peter proclaimed what he saw and was willing to die and suffer for it, this would show historians the genuineness of what Peter is claiming. As psychology shows, no one is willing to die for something they know not to be true. And so in this case, Peter would not be willing to die for Jesus' resurrection if he knew he did not see it happen. The question now lies, did Peter die as a martyr? The earliest known reference to Peter's martyrdom comes from a Gospel of John, which most scholars date to the 90s AD. As Jesus is speaking to Peter, he says this in chapter 21, verse 18 to 19. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. Now, even if you don't believe in the prophecy being made here, because John's Gospel dates to the 90s AD, the Gospel writer would have known of Peter's death, as most scholars date his death to the 60s AD. Therefore, the Gospel writer is simply acknowledging the death of Peter that had already happened. In fact, Biblical scholar Bar Ehrman, who is not a Christian, says this about the passage. It is clear that Peter is being told that he will be executed, he won't die of natural causes, and that this will be the death of a martyr. The first major source outside the New Testament that talks about Peter's martyrdom comes from Clement's first letter to the Corinthians. Clement was a bishop over Rome from 88 to 99 AD, and so his letter to the Corinthians comes from the first century, which is only a couple decades after the apparent death of Peter. As Clement is talking about jealousy, he says this in chapter 5, Peter, through unrighteous envy, endured not one or two, but numerous labors. And when he had at length suffered martyrdom, departed to the place of glory due to him. Most scholars believe that Peter was killed in Rome, so for Clement, bishop of Rome, to have this information of Peter's martyrdom makes sense. Ignatius of Antioch wrote seven letters in 110 AD, while on his way to be executed or martyred. In his letter to the Roman church, Ignatius is speaking of martyrdom, when in chapter 4 he says this, Entreat Christ for me, that by these instruments I may be found a sacrifice to God. I do not, as Peter and Paul, issue commandments unto you. They were apostles. I am but a condemned man. They were free, while I am, even now, a servant. Church tradition has it that both Peter and Paul were killed in Rome. So, Ignatius makes reference to this and says that they were freed from suffering and being servants, meaning they were freed from life or killed while Ignatius is yet to be freed, as they were. Going further in time to the year 170 AD, Dionysus of Corinth wrote a letter to Sodor, who was the bishop of Rome. As Dionysus recalls the humble beginnings of the church, he says this, You also by this instruction have mingled together the Romans and Corinthians, who are the planting of Peter and Paul. For they both came to our Corinth and planted us, and taught alike and alike going to Italy and teaching there, 
were martyred at the same time. To Dionysus, it is clear, both Peter and Paul were martyred, and Dionysus even provides the location to where, which is Rome. Later in 197 AD, Tertullian of Carthage defended the church by writing against heresy. While speaking of Rome, Tertullian says this in chapter 36, You have Rome, from which there comes even into our own hands the very authority of apostles themselves. How happy is its church, in which apostles poured forth all their doctrine along with their blood, where Peter endures a passion like his lords. Tertullian records that Peter was martyred in Rome, as did Dionysus of Corinth. What's fascinating about this quotation is that Tertullian describes Peter's martyrdom as being similar to Jesus' death, meaning Peter had suffered crucifixion. All these quotations from the New Testament and church fathers come from what scholar Marcus Bocumuel has named living memory, meaning the time period from the apostles themselves and through their disciples and the generation after. Here we have made a case using quotations that have come before 200 AD, so we can be less worrisome over legends arising about Peter's death. Based on this, we have multiple attestations coming from the New Testament and through a wide range of church fathers about the death and martyrdom of the Apostle Peter. Therefore, Peter was willing to proclaim the resurrected Jesus. He was willing to die for this claim, and as history shows, he did die therefore showing the genuineness of his claim of the resurrection of Jesus. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. As always, God bless.